slept pretty good last night. Um, anyway, I'm gonna start day off by walking up that little road. It only goes up maybe uh, 500 meters or so, and then I'll turn around and walk back and then carry on for the day. That'll, uh, that'll just get my legs warmed up. Okay, that was a swift walk. Um, it's probably only about 200 meters. Um, I've done that one really slow in the past in the midst of like deer season and stuff. It's 7.55 a.m. So that's when the sun rises over there, say 7.45. Every now and then you can hear a grouse. They make like a little chirp chirp sound. There's another bird out here that has a very similar sound. Um, so they're pretty close to one another and it's subtle difference. But uh, I think that was the other bird, not the grouse, because I saw a couple of them fly away and I didn't see any grouse. Anyway, uh, oop. <laughs> time to move on. It's warming up to be another hot day. Uh, it's like 9 a.m. maybe. Anyway, I'm probably gonna have to strip my long johns off like I did yesterday. And I'll just throw them in my backpack and carry them with me. Um, I'm gonna try and get up into the Alpine. I just got a calling to walk that way. It's gonna be a bit of a, a, bit of a hike. Um, and I was, I was just down below us, like right down there. I just came up the other side of this thing.
I left my water filter down in the uh, the van. I meant to grab it. I was like, I better grab that while I'm putting my pack together. And uh, yeah, it slipped my mind. And I'm quite a ways up right now. And I was just starting to think about having a drink. And then I was like, oh, I only have a liter. So I could drink from a creek. I haven't really been that kind of guy to just drink from a creek before, but I always filter things because you never know. Hang on, I gotta look at something. Hard to say, but it uh, could be a mountain goat. It's the right color, it's just not moving. I'll keep an eye on those two white spots. If they are a goat, I'll show you guys. I'll set up the uh, binoculars here and try and get the phone on them. ran into a grizzly first time I've seen one up here like in person and I think he's gone away so I got my bear spray out I had this quickly in my hand like right away I keep this in my pocket actually it doesn't need to be cocked just yet <laughs> that's got a bear banger in it and I just changed the round to my magazine from my gross load to my actual hunting round course it's illegal to shoot one of these things so I kind of just want to go up the trail a little bit and see that it's going that way I don't want them to be above me but I'm gonna back out of here I was planning on the road switchbacks up and it goes along there and I was going to go up into a meadow where I've seen a lot of black bear. <laughs> that guy was a grizz but he wasn't too big I don't think. Like he was a smaller one. Still I don't want to mess around with him. I heard him before I saw him.
Okay, I'm uh, now a reasonable distance down the mountain. Um, probably about halfway between where I was up there where the bear was and where my van is. So I'm gonna keep going down to the van um, and maybe just go somewhere else. That was, um, that was pretty interesting though. Um, I didn't get them on camera that quickly because the first thing I was reaching for was my, my, um, it's kind of like a little sidearm. It's a, it's an Orion pistol flare or flare pistol, pistol gun shoots flares. And what I've got in it is a, this is a bear deterrent round that these guys make. And I bought those. And the reason I like this is because essentially all I got to do, it's lightweight, it's in my pocket. I pull it out, cock the hammer, and then boom. And it'll flash right here and the sound comes right here. So you being, you know, the person you want to protect and the bear's over there, you can kind of point it in the general direction of the bear. It does say don't point it at the bear. So you can point it down to the ground or slightly up in the air. Um, that's the idea. And I got this because it was lightweight. And if I'm ever dressing a deer or just walking and uh, out scouting, I can carry this and I can bring this on a hike as opposed to my rifle. Uh, I only bring my rifle because I'm looking for for grouse pretty much um and i carry a few deer rounds like hunting rounds with me just in case but it'd be probably i would pass a shot up if it was this early in the season it's just too hot um it's probably about 25 degrees right now so anyway i i loaded up my magazine with those just in case I had the bear spray out as well. So the idea is this first, then bear spray. And if worse comes to worse and you know, there's an actual encounter like physically, then uh, if there was the opportunity to sort of regain some control and those two methods didn't work, then I would shoot it with the rifle. Um, and then I would have to report it as well. Um, so it's, Ideally, um, I would never want to have that happen. Um, and I'm pretty sure that this is going to be enough. And I didn't shoot it because he was a ways away. He was still probably about 30 yards away from me. And, um, and he stopped and you could see he was kind of figuring things out, deciding whether or not he wanted to get closer or move away. And I figured if he's coming closer, then I'm definitely gonna shoot this off. And uh, and I was kind of scrambling a little bit because I, uh, you know, as soon as he wandered off, I caught the corner of him in the camera. Um, then I just sort of set the tripod down and then I got my bear spray out, had that handy, and then I was trying to change rounds in my magazine. Um, but yeah, the bear spray isn't really handy. I keep it in my, my pack I don't keep it on a holster um, there's sometimes where I just don't even bring it out at all um, but I always bring this with me um, and the reason I use this or I prefer this over the bear spray is because any videos I've seen of bear encounters with hunters and stuff like that generally when they shoot their rifle it's it, it the bear kind of hesitates um, and often stops you know if it's in a mid charge it'll 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 slow down and stop and be like, huh, you know? And uh, so I figured this'll get me a little bit of time to get the bear spray out. But in most of those footage videos I've seen, the bear usually takes off after that anyway. Um, so yeah, that that's, that's more or less it. I do carry around two of these bear, two of these with me and then two flares with me. Um, they're pretty lightweight, so um, really it's it's probably about, I don't know, like maybe a hundred grams. It's pretty light, so. Um, anyway, I'm going to keep going down the mountain. Um, I'm going to change my footwear when I get down there. I'm wearing my hiking boots and some wool socks and 
As much as I like wearing them because they give me that extra stability while hiking, they do get pretty warm. Uh, so I'm gonna go down and just change them out and put my um, my little ventilators in them so that they dry out quicker. And then I'll put on my other shoes and just, uh, I don't know, I'll probably find a shadier spot, maybe down where I was yesterday, which is back down this valley, up up on this mountain that you see back there. So somewhere down there on this side. Or or maybe I'll go, actually, maybe I'll go that way because I haven't been that way yet. That's probably what I'll do. So I'll go down and then I'll, I'll, I'll shoot towards the Squamish Valley. made it <laughs> okay so up here right about there just below that tree line is where i ran into mr grizz and above that tree line is this really amazing meadow and that's where i was trying to get to anyway show you the view the rest of it so there's the van Right down there. And that over there, down in that valley is where the Squamish River is. And uh, back behind this mountain over there is the Ashloo River. And this is Cloudburst Mountain. It's a special mountain for me. I really like this one. It's the first one in the range. Um, and it stands all by itself, which is kind of nice. It's got a pretty prominent valley between it, right down in there. So it comes down like this, and then it goes up to Tricuni, which is back up in that way. So you got Tricuni Meadows is up there, and then there's series of mountains that keep going back behind all that. This is an excellent view up here, I love it. And back over here, these mountains over here, looks like they've got a little bit of haze up in them, even, even up that way. I'm wondering if that's some smoke haze. That's kind of what it looks like. Looks a little bit smoky over, over this way too. Go, uh, I'm gonna go relax. I'm just gonna quietly drive, and uh, I'm feeling pretty tired after that hike. That's probably the first big hike I've done since last year, and that's uh, it's quite a push for the first one, anyway. All right.